The one thing I often struggle with is focus. I know a lot of people struggle with focus, sometimes more than others, and some days I feel like I've totally nailed it, and other days I literally sit and go, what the f*** should I do next? I don't know what I need to do now. I know I've got a massive to-do list of stuff, but where do I start? And the other problem I have is trying to do too many things at the same time. Because I'm working on something, go, oh, uh, I need to reply to that email. So then I open up, I hit the reply button. Now I've now got multiple windows open and try to tick off too many things in a short space of time. And ultimately all that happens is three hours later, the to-do list is still the same as what it was. I've not actually completed any of the stuff that I thought I was actually completing. But because you've got all these things going on at the same time, it feels like you're doing work. It feels like you're getting stuff done. The reality is... I'm getting nothing done and it's just festering to the point where it's now lunchtime and I'm going, I really need to get all these things done and I've pretty much got none of them done. I'm 41, right? And I've actually now come to the realisation that I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> like, how is it taking this long to figure that out, right? Maybe it's because, you know, we're all told that, oh, you should be multitasking. Like, multitasking... I don't even know where the term multitasking comes from. We talk about it in computing. You might remember back to the days when like processors and computers went to dual core. Remember we had Intel. Dun, 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 dun. Everyone has the Intel tune in their head. It's like McDonald's, isn't it? The du, 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 du. Anyway, Intel, when they brought out like the dual core processors, it was like, oh, multitasking. It, like, it was this whole thing that like, now your computer could do multiple things at once. The reality is, is, a computer can't do multiple things at once. It can do one thing at once. But what it does, and here's a very technical term, time division multiplexing, and that's the most technical thing I'm ever going to say in this show. What it basically does is that your computer is processing like 10 things at once, but what it does is it, it, it intersects these things very quickly into the computing power, right? So it will say, it will do this thing for like a millisecond, this thing for a millisecond, and it does it very, very quickly. So the perception to the user is that it's doing all these things at once. It's running all these programs at once, it's downloading a video, it's spreadsheet, email, like all these programs are running, but it's actually only working on them at once at a time. However, we do have like multi-core, like I think my new MacBook's got like 12 cores. That means it can actually do 12 things at once now because it's got all these multiple cores. So technology's obviously moved on, but humans, we don't. We have one brain and our brain can literally do one thing at a time. And it fails when you try to do multiple things at a time. So anyway, it's probably why I like things like cycling things because I'm out, I'm doing it, I'm focused on that one thing. And some people, when they run and they go to the gym or they cycle, whatever, they say, I think there's two camps. There's the people that go, I love doing that thing because it allows me to think about other things. Like my running coach, Stephen Bonthrone, I'll make sure I tag him in this promote his business as well if you want to run better move better and all that kind of stuff I will tag Stephen in this Stephen is one of those guys that when he's out running it allows him to think about other stuff he said this to me before I can think about other things I can start to think about my business or my marketing or something else I'm the opposite when I used to do a lot of running and now I'm a cyclist when I'm out doing that thing I literally just think about that thing and that's what I like because it allows me to not think about all those other things and just focus on it. I think you're in two camps when it comes to that kind of stuff. But for me, when it comes to work, a few of the things that I've struggled with is, like I said, I love to-do lists, but the problem with to-do lists is that there's no time against the things. So you create a to-do list, you go, oh, there's another thing, and it's the to-do list. But I'm sure everyone that's got a to-do list has got, you tick off four or five things, but there's always those few things that always seem to sit there. They just never get done. And like six months go by and they're still there. And you just, you see them every day. And it's really frustrating when you see them every day because you go, those are the things that I know are quite important. The things that will really help my business or help me or whatever it is. But I just never get down to doing them. You just do the kind of basic kind of quick wins, if you like, or the things that people are shouting at you most about, which is usually the case. Like, you need to get this done. So like, right, I better get it done so they don't shout at me anymore. The things that you're only holding yourself accountable to are the things that just sit in the back burner, like, forever. So I struggle with this. And I've tried, like, numerous ways to try and get better at being focused. Some of the examples are, 
breaking things into smaller steps. We've all heard how do you eat an elephant, like one bite at a time, right? So you look at a big task, you go, how the hell am I going to get that done? And it's only when you go, right, actually, what's the first thing I need to do to get started? And then kind of it just flows on from there. So sometimes taking the bigger task and breaking it down helps. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I think I am probably definitely undiagnosed adult ADHD. I've read enough books, taken enough of the online tests and stuff, spoken to enough people and people have definitely said, yeah, Mark, you've definitely got ADHD. I just don't have the clinical diagnosis, right? But the satisfaction, that kind of like dopamine hit of like achievements, it's probably why I love like gaming and things like that, because like the achievement of the next level upgrading, like leveling up. And if you take a big task and you break it down into chunks, you get more satisfaction of ticking more things off. Because if you have one big task, you don't get to tick it off until the big, the whole thing's completed. If you break it down into small chunks, you get the satisfaction of ticking off each thing as you go along. So that gives you that kind of like little dopamine kind of hit of an achievement, of course. But the problem is, if you are an ADHD brain person, then you tick off five things and you get such a great feeling that you've done that, that you think, right, that's me done for the day, right? I've done five things. I've, ch- I've achieved loads. So the other 15 things are, they can wait till tomorrow because I feel like I've accomplished something. So that's slight downside. The other one is um, like using timers. Like you might have heard of the Pomodoro technique where it's like 25 minutes and then a five minute break. That doesn't work for me. I don't know why. I've just never been able to kind of get into that whole kind of thing. Of It's meant to help you knowing that there's a break coming up, but I would rather just kind of work on and have a longer break further down the line rather than this whole short burst of stuff. So that hasn't worked. Minimizing distractions. So this does work for me. I like literally tune into everything. So if I'm in the office and there's like five conversations going on, I am literally tuned into all five conversations at once. And it's really distracting because I'll hear something go, oh, I can add something to that or I can help or I hear someone asking a question and go, I can help with that. But actually, I should be focused on what I'm actually doing. So minimizing distractions is a big one for me, background noise, which is why I tend to be found with headphones on. And also I've found that I prefer working in like darker rooms. So turning off the lights and just having some like lamps on or some RGB lighting or something like that actually helps. Bright lights tend to make it difficult for me to to focus. Also, I think when your screen is the brightest thing, it helps you just narrow in the focus on that. And also clutter free. As I say, I look at my desk, it needs a bit of a tidy up, but actually just I like a nice clean kind of workspace. That so those help. So massive difference. I've already talked about physical exercise allows you to focus. So sometimes if I'm really struggling to focus our office where I work from in Perth is in a business centre where you can walk all the way around the building. So sometimes we're just going to do maybe like a lap or two of the building. Not sprinting it, just a walk, just to get out and just kind of get away and just then that helps have that kind of like break. And then, you know, just sometimes just have to accept the fate that you're having a bad day and that you just struggle that day. And like, I just can't seem to focus on getting anything done. So on those days, I tend just to think about, well, what are the quick wins? What are the What's the five minute things I can just do just to actually make myself feel a bit better about actually getting stuff done? And the big things that I'm trying to get done, they'll happen tomorrow, right? Unless the deadline's 5 p.m., of course, in which case ADHD brain people are amazing when it comes to a deadline. We wait until there's like two hours to go and then we do the whole thing in two hours, right? And it's amazing because we're so focused on doing it. I was doing this recently for a presentation. I started it. I had a week off, came back to it. And then realized that there was a few tweaks and things I had to make. And then, of course, I'm stressing out because like, I had a deadline to deliver this thing in person and then rehearsed it like 36 times. And of course, it was great. But it was all this stress and worry for like a 20-minute presentation, which was actually really good and got really good feedback from it. So sometimes just overthinking stuff is a bit of a problem. So, And then, of course, this is obviously TechS. Got to talk about technology, right? And so there's a couple of things that I've started using recently. I wish there was three because I always like the power of the odd number when it comes to like lists and stuff. There's there's two and there's maybe a bonus one actually, but only if you're an Apple user. 
the two things that I've started using recently that have actually massively helped with um, struggles to focus and actually, especially if ADHD brains and everything else is I'm going to cover the big one first, which is motion app. Now, I'm actually going to caveat this advice and what I'm going to tell you to say that I'm not sponsored by these people. I don't make any money from anyone going out to use these things I'm going to tell you about, but they've been pretty much game changing for me. So I kind of wanted to share them and I have talked about them. I've mentioned on a few LinkedIn posts, some comments, and I've been telling everyone that I know about this and people go, oh, yeah, I've heard of that, but I've not quite looked into it or not started using it yet. So Motion app, uh, the website if you want to check it out is usemotion.com. So Motion is basically an automatic scheduler, right? So I talked earlier about, you know, you have a to-do list that is a, just a list of stuff. It doesn't have any deadlines against them. And that's what's missing. What Motion basically does is it integrates with your calendar. So I use Office 365. It, I think it works with Google Calendar as well. But effectively, rather than just creating a, a, a to-do list, you put your task into Motion and you say, this is how long this task is going to be. This is when I need to get it done by, etc., etc. There's lots of options. And then Motion automatically puts this stuff into your calendar. Rather than just a to-do list that sits there that is up to you to decide when things need to be done, Motion actually schedules these things for you and it does it kind of like on the fly. So the minute you think, oh, I've got this task to do, I can, I, well, I hit option space on a Mac and it automatically comes up with the their kind of like old task scheduler thing. And I just stick the task in there, say, right, I've got this task, I need to do it by Friday. It's going to take me 15 minutes, done. And then I can forget about it. And then what I do is each day I'm now using Motion as my calendar because it's scheduling the timing for these things. And then I have recurring tasks like say, oh, I want 30 minutes for lunch and I want that between 12 and 2 p.m. each day. I don't really mind when it happens within that window, but as long as it happens, right? And it makes sure that it, you schedule these recurring tasks. The other thing that I've started doing since using Motion is not just responding and checking emails when they come in. I think that's a big one. I think a lot of people just, you know, an email pops up and they go, oh, I better respond to that. So what's happening is, is that you're working on something and you're just interrupting yourself all the time with like the pings and dings and stuff. So I actually have my Outlook set to not pop up on the screen when an email comes in. I've had that for a long time because that's really helped. But what I actually have is I have an hour per day to deal with emails and that gets split up into chunks. So Motion splits that up into 15 minute chunks for me. So I only check my email four times a day, which allows me to then not be distracted by email and not panic that that's there and it's just come in and I better respond to it. I know that, hey, it's fine because in 30 minutes, I've got time scheduled to deal with emails and that email can wait till then because if, if there's an email that's that urgent, it should be a phone call for a start, right? Email is not an instant way of communicating anyway. It, so if someone needs to get hold of me and there's, something's on fire, so then they can get in touch with me and they'll phone. And someone said that I only take criticism from people that are important to me, something like that. And they said, if you have my number, call me and tell me about it. And if you don't have my number, you're not important for me to worry about it. The point is, is that if something's that important, then they're going to call. So yeah, not not responding to emails in real time as they come in and scheduling that time. So Motion's been a bit of a game changer for me. I signed up for the free trial and then quickly went, yeah, I need this in my life and paid for it. The other cool thing actually Motion has built in is if there's any Calendly users or any other calendar kind of app where you can send a link and people can see your calendar and stuff, Motion actually has that built in. So yeah, Motion cheaper and it has that built in, which is quite cool. So if you want to create like a booking link or suggest times for people, rather than saying, hey, when can you meet me, Neil? You just say, here's a link to my calendar or you can block off time. So if you say, right, I want to meet with this person between 1 and 3 p.m. next Tuesday, you can basically, you just click and drag that time and, it, and then it will create a custom link for that person that you can send to them and I'll only offer them it within that time window. Because I don't know if anyone's used these apps, but one thing I 
find quite frustrating sometimes is that they look at your calendar and if you're free it'll allow for someone to book time in that and of course it's happened to me several times where someone's gone and booked a meeting at like 4.45 on Friday and you're like well I, I was planning to be like like two beers in by then and, and now I've got to have a call and so yeah it can be frustrating but it's obviously down to, to you blocking off time to make sure these apps don't schedule time when you don't want them to. And the second kind of bit of tech or app that I want to recommend is called... Welcome to TechSess, the show about helping you to get the right technology and cybersecurity in place to enable your business to be more safe and successful. I'm your host, Mark Riddell, Managing Director of M3 Networks. Over 140 businesses across the UK use us to put an end to staff complaints about frustrating IT problems. And the second kind of bit of tech or app that I want to recommend is called Endo which is E-N-D-E-L, and endo.io is the website. And what Endo is, is like soundscapes, personalised soundscapes. Because one thing that I realise is that, now I love heavy metal and classic rock music, so I'm, you know, Guns N' Roses, AC, DC, all day. But when I'm working, I found that I really struggle if I'm listening to music that has lyrics. Now, this might be the same for other people that, struggle with focus or people with ADHD I don't know maybe it's just me but I really struggle when I've got music on that's got lyrics because of course I want to sing along and that distracts me like I want to go head like your favorite songs come on you're like you're wanting to like kind of get into it so music helps me but only if it's the right kind of music and I've used a couple of apps I used another app that was very similar to this but I found that their music was a bit annoying Basically, these are like AI kind of generated kind of back, they all say it's like back by neuroscience where they've got certain like kind of pulses or beats in the music that are designed to help you focus and stuff. Endo is an app, I've got it on my phone, I've got it kind of on my Mac, they've got downloads for like the App Store, the Mac Store, everything. And I think it's mostly Mac focused, but you can get it on like your Alexa and Google Play and everything else. But basically what it does is it creates soundscapes that adapt like in real time. So it says things like the time of day, like the weather, you know, the weather in your location, how that affects things. I obviously don't know the science and how they've actually worked all this stuff out. That's what I obviously pay them to use the app for. But they, they say that they improve focus and lower stress and it really does work. You can switch on different things. So like whether you want to relax, I normally have it on focus mode. And then you can you can tweak the sounds so like you there's like a little kind of visual kind of slider thing that you can say well I want the music to be more relaxed or more energetic or whatever, and it just plays. It does have the kind of Pomodoro kind of thing built in where you can set timers for stuff. So if you say well I want like a a 25 or a 15 minute timer on the music, I just have it pretty much playing all the time to be honest. And I found that because it is kind of like background focus stuff even when i'm on teams calls and things i've just left it playing in the background so i'm listening to it and i can still have conversations and things with it there and it does just help with the the focus i was using some playlists on spotify that had this type of music and stuff but the problem with a playlist is that they're songs and eventually you've heard them all and you go but i've heard that i heard that like two hours ago so the thing with Endo, because it's AI generated, you're getting like new stuff all the time, right? It's not, oh, we're back to the start of the playlist or whatever. So the playlist stuff was fine, nothing against them, but it's not specific and it's not got any AI in it to use that kind of buzzword. So that as my, those are my two recommendations to look at if you struggle with focus. Again, Motion App and Endo being game changers for me i'm using them all day every day and i have been for a couple of months now and make a massive massive difference there is a third bonus one it's mac only which is not actually probably so much of a focus app but it kind of is because it helps with productivity and it is called magnet you get it on the app store and i think it's like 10 quid one off it was worth paying for because once you read the reviews you go actually this is actually adding some functionality that's missing in the mac and what magnet is and to be honest, if you just work on a MacBook with the MacBook screen, this is probably not 
for you. If you're connecting your Mac up to multiple screens, which I do when I'm in the office, I use a dock. So I have my MacBook screen plus two other monitors, three screens. And what Magnet does is it allows you to easily move. I know you can click and drag your Windows to different screens. And, and Windows users are going to go, well, oh, you can, yeah, but you can do that in Windows and this is why they're better. So I must admit, this is one thing that is missing from Mac OS. I'm sure one day they'll just they'll either just buy Magnet and incorporate their technology into it or whatever. But if you've got a big screen and if you've been using Windows, you can just drag a window to the left or to the right and it snaps to 50% of the screen. Resizing, let's be honest, resizing Windows, as we are saying Windows in a Mac, but resizing a window on a Mac is a total pain in the arse. You've got to like either click and drag it or move it to the side and then resize it manually. There's no way for you to kind of use a keyboard command or click on something that basically says, I've got a big screen, I want to have email there in the left 50%, and I want to have my web browser on the right of the screen, and they both take up 50% of the screen. And a Mac, that's not easy. And a Windows, especially Windows 11, now it's very easy because you can have multiple grid layouts, a 4x4 or whatever. Anyway, what Magnet does is it has basically keyboard commands, or you can click on the, on the taskbar and do this, but... You can say, right, I want that window to be there half on that screen, that window to be half of that screen. And once you get to know the shortcuts that you use, it's very, very quickly, quick to do. Especially if you want to jump something from one screen to another screen, you can do that, make things full screen. If you want to do 75, 25% split is quite handy to do. So yeah, anyone who's using multiple screens on a Mac and wants that functionality that you know is missing, from the Mac, right? Then Magnet on the App Store, 10 quid. That's a game changer as well. But it's one of these things that should just be there in the first place. But hey, you can solve the problem for £10. So just to wrap up this episode, I hope it's been insightful to see how people struggle. I know a lot of people say to me, they think that I'm on the ball and I've kind of got things kind of together and stuff. But hey, some days I don't. And I think we're all like that. And um, we all need to kind of find ways to kind of one, be self-aware of how you struggle to get work done and deal with tasks, which is really important. Yeah, you might wait until you're 41 like me to kind of realise that. And then the second thing is always how can technology help solve those problems, which there's always an answer with technology, right? And I hope that some of the things I've shared will actually help other people out there. Definitely go and check them out. And if anyone from Motion or Endo wants to chuck me like a discount code for anyone to like sign up and get some money off these things, then that would be great as well. But like I said, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just use them and they help me. So hopefully if you check them out, they might help you as well. If you'd like a quick chat with me about anything I've discussed in this episode, or you have a specific question about any aspect of your IT or cybersecurity, you can book a call in my diary. Just head over to www.m3networks.co.uk forward slash meet Mark. And finally, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to follow or subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app for future episodes, where I'll dive deeper into other IT and cyber related topics. Texas is an M3 Networks podcast. Find out more at m3networks.co.uk. Okay. Okay.